Welcome to this video about partial least squares discriminant analysis. Note that this video is a continuation of the video about partial least square regression, which means that assume that you have watched that video before this one. PLS discriminant analysis is very similar to PLS regression. The main difference is that the dependent variable in PLS discriminant analysis has a categorical scale whereas the dependent variable has a continuous scale in PLS regression. PLS discriminant analysis can therefore be used as a classifier. To explain how PLS discriminant analysis works, let's consider the following dataset, which is the same dataset that we used in a lecture about discriminant analysis. Suppose that we like to predict if a person has a viral or bacterial infection based on the C-reactive protein concentration in the blood and the body temperature. The following training data with known infections of the 12 patients can be used to train this model so that the model is able to distinguish between a viral infection and a bacterial infection based on the CRP and the body temperature. PLS discriminant analysis combines the explanatory variables into a variable that is called a latent variable. These are the optimal values of the weights that generate maximum covariance between a dependent variable and the first latent variable. Watch the lecture about partial least square regression to see how these weights are calculated. Based on these two weights, we can now calculate the scores of the latent variable. These numbers represent the scores of the latent variable. For example, if we would plug in the CRP and body temperature of the first person in this equation and do the math, we will get a score of 42.5. Note that the scores of the latent variable are usually presented as centered scores, which means that the mean score has been subtracted from these values. However, in this example we will not center the scores. We then perform linear regression where LV1 now represents our explanatory variable. We should therefore estimate these two parameters. To perform linear regression when the dependent variable has a categorical scale, we have to transform the variable into a vector with ones and zeros, which define the class. For example, we can define that the viral group should be represented with zeros and that the bacteria group should be represented by 1s. By using linear regression, the intercept and the slope will be estimated to the following values. If we plug in the values for the latent variable, we can now calculate the predicted values. These are the predicted values. Note that these predicted values can also be calculated by the following equation where this part of the equation corresponds to the latent variable. To illustrate graphically how the method predicts the class, we can make the following plot, where individuals with a bacterial infection are coded as 1s, whereas the individuals with a viral infection are coded as zeros. The x-axis represents the scores of the latent variable. By using linear regression, we can fit the following line to the data. This line has the following intercept and slope that we estimated earlier. For example, the predicted value of the following person can be obtained by drawing a vertical line from the point to the regression line, and then the horizontal line from the regression line to the y-axis. We see that the predicted value is about 0.68. This corresponds to the predicted value of person number 1. So, how should we use this model to predict if someone has a bacterial or viral infection? To do that, we need some sort of cutoff value. The cutoff value we select should be somewhere between 0 and 1. I here arbitrarily set the cutoff value to 0 0.5. By using a cutoff value of 0 0.5, we say that if a person has a predicted value that is lower than 0.5, the person is classified as having a viral infection. And if a person has a predicted value that is greater than 0.5, the person is classified as having a bacterial infection. 
Based on this cutoff value, our PLS discriminant analysis model predicts the following classes. For example, since the predicted value of person number 1 is greater than 0 0.5, this person is predicted to have a bacterial infection. However, since we know based on the training data that the first individual had a viral infection, we know that the predicted class, bacteria, is incorrect. The same is also true for the last person, which is incorrectly predicted to have a viral infection. Since the model makes 10 correct predictions out of 12 possible, the accuracy is equal to about 83%. Based on the predicted values, we can generate the following RC curve that shows how the sensitivity and specificity change for different cutoff values. For example, the following point on the curve shows the sensitivity and specificity for a cutoff value of 0 0.5. Watch the lecture about RSC curves to understand how it is created and interpreted. Also, watch the lecture about validation to see how we can validate these kinds of models before we draw a conclusion about their accuracy. Once we have established our model and determined a cutoff value, we can use it to predict a new case. For example, if a person has a CRP value of 50 and a body temperature of 38, we plug in these values in the equation and do the math. Since the predicted value is greater than the cutoff value of 0 0.5, we would predict that the person has a bacterial infection. This was the end of this lecture about partial least-squared discriminant analysis. Thanks for watching.